So I'm back at Windang Island and um, about this time last year in June of 2015 I did a video here and um, just showed some of the stone tools that can be found and um, the effects of the erosion to date. So I've come back, it's a year later in June 2016 and at the beginning of the month of June we saw some um, storms that had a, a big impact on erosion along the east coast due to king tides. So I've just come back and I want to have a look and see how much of, of an effect the king tides have had on the, um, on the midden site at Windang Island. So this is just a different angle um, from the one that we're looking at. We're still looking at the west face of the island and of this midden site. And what we can see is that um, this area has been affected by coastal erosion following that storm. We can see you know, large chunks um, that have been eroded off. And as I move further around to the north face of the island, you'll see um, the effects of that erosion as well as other large um, chunks of this midden site has been eroded out. But what we can see underlying um, is layers of shells and stone. So we might take the opportunity to push in and have a look at um, what is revealed um, due to that erosion. So if I just pan the camera around, you can see some of the new midden site that's been eroded. And if I just pan back again to this particular layer here, uh, you can see that um, it represents a particular period of time that these shells were laid down. Pulling the camera back, you can see that this layer extends all the way around. And this is a part of the deposit that um, was not seen previous but it also gives a good example of how these shells were laid down. Tilting down, or actually if you have a look just here, we can see a break in how the shells were deposited. So this may represent, um, you know, a period in which sand covered this particular part of the midden site or other areas of the midden site were used. So starting by looking at the north west face. I'm going to pan around so you're going to have a look at the north side and what we can see that um, this side has suffered quite a lot of erosion. We can see, um, if we go around a bit more, here where these steps were in the um, a year ago when I shot this particular angle um, or closer to it, uh, this, uh, this area didn't look like this and um, this particular part of the um, of this island still remained intact but it was suffering still a lot of erosion but we can see now that due to the king tides water has got in and um, eroded underneath if we have a look along here and um, other areas along this north face represent that well the water has got in and eroded underneath which has caused the bank to collapse so looking at this small ladder that goes up the island, what we can see is compared to last year, this particular spot here has suffered um, extensive erosion to the point where the stairs themselves have um, been eroded away. So a large chunk of the bank um, in this particular area has been eroded out and um, should another king tide or high tide hit this area, a lot of this bank here will be eroded and um, this part here will be the, the new start of the bank. So it's, um, it's interesting to see the amount of this midden site that has been lost in um, a short period of time, in 12 months. This, this whole area here, um, all the way along, so half a metre, maybe under that, has been eroded away. Um, if this continues, it won't be long before large portions of this midden site um, are lost. So I've just moved around and I'm just interested in this layer of mussels that we can see along here. We can see that it's quite an extensive layer, it actually extends all the way along and it seems to represent quite an extensive um, period of deposition or depositing of these kinds of shells. And it's interesting to note just above that layer we can see that the kinds of shells changed and they changed to some of the larger turban shells and shells associated with gathering of rock um, from rock platforms and things like that. So it's interesting 
this this layer here, what it may represent, did it represent a period of gathering a different kind of food source, or did the food sources change over a period of time? Did the inlet where these mussels may have been collected from change from being silty and muddy to more sandy? Or were these shells collected from the lake themselves and brought to this particular site? It's, um, it's quite an interesting, interesting um, layer and it would be worth investigating um, that a little bit further. So just panning around, what you can see is that the, the king tide eroded underneath um, the bank and as it does it causes weaknesses and the bank collapses. So this is the effect of erosion on this particular site. As the bank is eroded underneath it will collapse and as other tides come in they will gradually erode away the, that particular part of the bank exposing the newly formed eroded bank behind it. And everything within that, that particular bank that's going to collapse or that has collapsed will be eroded out and will eventually be deposited as stones um, along, along this, um, this coastal, coastal side of the island. And as time progresses, these, these tools will be lost or the, um, what's hidden within the midden side will be, will be lost. So it's an interesting period of time to, to check out some of these sites because they are gradually disappearing. And some of the, the old knowledge and things like that that they contain or some of the hidden secrets of the people that existed in this particular area at that time will be lost and um, it will be difficult to try to interpret their, their customs and hunting and gathering styles in the future. So just punching in, what we can see is some of the stones again associated with this particular midden side, and we can see a lot of the rounded cobblestones, and these may simply have been used as small hammer stones to, to crack open these shells but we can also see various kinds of flakes and these would have been removed to produce a cutting edge that would have assisted um, for whatever purpose. So what I wanted to show you was this particular form here and you've seen in some of the other videos similar forms to this and this particular stone is made up of some of the local um, sedimentary rock that can be found in this particular area. But this particular form is known as a legendary stone and has been extensively documented in the McLean River. And this particular form um, has misassociated with it, um, very, various stories associated with snakes or the moon. Um, this particular form is usually found um, without much modification, although maybe there appears to be some, um, some modification on this particular edge, if this was to be described as an edge. Um, so this is um, an L-shaped legendary stone and this particular form can be found all along the east coast and um, we've seen this particular form in some of the other videos. So this is a documented form and um, we can see that this may not have occurred naturally although this particular form does but due to its um, sort of sharp irregular edges unless it was eroded out in this particular way I'd say this may have had some kind of manufacturing behind it, although the weathering associated with it, with a lot of these squared edges not being round, which would have occurred due to surf action, um, this, this stone may have had some um, modification assistance um, occur or may have naturally occurred in this form and has been noted um, for its um, mythical purposes or due to its form factor. So what we've got here is a piece of basalt and we can see some pitting that has occurred either through small mollusks that have, um, or gastropods that have eaten these, um, these particular holes as they do to secure themselves to the rocks. But um, this particular stone being quite up, high up in this midden site may have been used as a fire stone um, to hold 
hold a shaft or something similar to that to um, to start fires. So this particular small um, piece of mafic rock contains three three pits, actually four pits. One, two, three, and then the fourth. So this um, would have been kept on site to be used um, as a firestone. So what we've got is a piece of quartzite or some kind of maybe mafic rock it's hard to tell. Anyway, um, what we've got is a bifaced um, cobble and we can see that it's had two, uh, two attempts at percussion on both sides and both sides possibly failed due to this what's known as a step termination um, where the flake rolls off and then straight back out of the core. However, it may have been on purpose and it may have just been satisfactory enough to produce the kind of edge that was required. We can see that this end here um, may represent a nice hand grip or palm grip and um, this, this particular edge would have served its purpose. What we've got here is another piece of mafic rock and I want to get a really close focus on this because what I want to show you is this particular indentation here and um, we've just had a look at it, another um, kind of firestone. We also saw that it was made of this hard mafic sort of basalt rock but if we have a look in this particular example we can see that inside this indentation it's worn really quite smooth we can see that if this was eaten out by a mollusk or gastropod which it may have initially have occurred to produce this slight indentation um, it's definitely been smoothed out since that time um, we can see that um, inside here is quite smooth which um, may represent that this stone was used again as a small fire stone. It's quite a nice example of um, how some of these, these indentations were used to hold shafts and we can see that this one certainly displays um, something to that nature as we can see that the inside of this, this indentation is worn really, really quite smooth. So I've just moved up along the bank and I'm just walking along just seeing if I can't find anything of interest. Tilting down, what I've come across is this piece of sandstone or quartzite. And if I just fix my focus on this, what you'll be able to see is that it has two faces that are worn really quite smooth. We can see that this one is pretty much almost flat, as is this one here turning it around this also appears to be quite smooth this um, maybe due to being used as a grinding surface itself or maybe due to use wear through something like um, holding it um, however that's a bit of a call looking at this end here it displays pitting which may mean that it was also used for sort of mashing up fibrous material or something similar to that it, um, it's quite irregular so that's quite an interesting example of a mill muller stone and um, it's interesting how it actually displays two flat faces. It's quite large, it would be quite a nice grinding surface or um, implement for grinding on a larger surface. So again what we can see in this side which we saw before was a lot of trunicated stones, so stones that have been broken in half. Um, there's various examples of that all over the place. Um, you may think that these stones may have, you know, naturally broken in half and I'd have to suggest that that's possibly not necessarily the case. Under most circumstances, due to how the force um, is applied to produce this kind of fracture and it's not the kind of force that is applied due to something like a king tide, high tide um, or you know rocks rolling over each other. This is an interesting example what we've got is a, a cobble 
that's got two notches on um, on this side and has a large negative pole of percussion on this side. So this this particular small cobble was um, definitely had some kind of an intentional flaking occur, maybe to produce a slightly better cutting edge. Um, you can see maybe some minute retouching that's occurred along there, um, but definitely displays three points of percussion. So looking at this particular layer here, we can see that just here we've got quite a large area of deposition of muscle shells, and then there seems to be a bit of a hiatus or break in those muscle shells, and we move more into the turban shells and things like that. So what this layer of muscle shells may represent is a different form of gathering. Um, the muscles may have been more common at the time when this layer was laid down. Um, mussels tend to like to live either in salty water, brackish water or fresh water. They can live in mud, silty water um, or can be found in intertidal zones. So the collection of these mussels may have occurred, if I just pan the camera around, just straighten it up, when the inlet um, from the lake flowed out. And the habitat of the mussels may have been um, more suited or due to the over collection of these mussels they may have dwindled as a resource and following if you follow this layer it can be found all the way along so it represents quite an extensive collection of mussels and um, may represent over harvesting um, we can see for some reason that there is a break um, it's unsure why that break or um, the change in collection occurred maybe the midden site um, changed, maybe the area of choice for consuming the mussels or the shells changed, but when we look higher up in the deposit we see that the mussels are not well represented, which means either A, that they are over harvested, or that, that the habitat um, or environmental circumstances for the mussels to occur um, also changed. So I've just punched in closer to this mussel layer and we can see that it's quite a thick deposit of mussel shells and as these were collected um, this may have represented a fairly good source of protein. Um, it is interesting to note why the layer suddenly changes if we tilt up. We can see that this particular layer ends and it becomes quite scarce or the mussels themselves becomes quite scarce and if I tilt up further we can see that the, the turban shells and things like that become more common. So I'm going to leave it there. This is just a quick look again at Windang Island and the effects that erosion has had on this particular site over the last 12 months. Um, I may come back to this site again sometime in the future and just check out the kind of stone tools that have been eroded out once some of the bank sediment has been, um, has been washed away and um, new kinds of tools um, are eroded out. But um, as we can see, well, the main purpose of this video is to highlight the effects of erosion on some of these coastal midden sites. And as we can see, over such a short period of time, the effects have been quite significant.